Hello, my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and in today's Thursday Q&A we're going to be looking at my palette. Yes, my selection of colours and we're going to be looking at how transparent or opaque they're going to be. And we'll talk a little bit about glazing as well if that's something you'll be interested in. I invite you to join me in the studio just after the short introduction and I'll see you there. No worries. And thank you very much for taking up my invitation to join me in the studio. Now, as you know, I've just mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be looking at my colours. So what I've done is I've put a grid up at the top of all the colours that I use on a regular basis during my paintings on your channel. Yes. And I say it's your channel because it is. I do these paintings for you and um, I hope you're learning a lot and I hope you're enjoying painting along with me as I uh, enjoy making them for you to follow along with me. So, um, yeah, so all uh, the colours that I actually use are, are there. Now, I'm just going to go through those very quickly before we move in on the camera and I'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing with these colours. So, I got a cadmium red, I got a Arizalin crimson and cadmium orange. I got a cadmium deep yellow. I got a cadmium yellow medium. I've got a Naples yellow, a lemon yellow, Prussian blue, phyllo blue, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, a hooker's green, a phyllo green, a Van Dyke brown, burnt ember, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and yellow ochre. Now those are the colours in my palette. Um, a limited type of colours but I've got a wide spectrum of all. Now so as you can see it's a wide spectrum of colours that we're going to be using there. Now what are we going to do with that? Well, we need to know how opaque or transparent they are. So by opaque I mean that you can't see through them like my hand and by transparent it's like as if I picking up a little bit of glass here and you can see me through it so transparent and opaque and I gotta say it like that because there are people up there that don't understand the difference that some colors are a lot uh, heavier with pigment than others so some pigments you can actually see through they like transparent it says the keys in the, the, the clues in the words transparent and some are opaque that means you can't see them now if you add white to most colors then you're going to make them opaque because the white is a very heavy bodied type of paint. And um, anyway, we will talk about the whites in a moment. Now, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the actual canvas itself. Yes, spinny, spinny. OK, so what we got here now, we're looking at the um, the, 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 the canvas. Oh, forgot the words. Yes, I'm looking at the canvas and um, I'm having a little drink. So it's quite warm in the studio here tonight and we're looking at cadmium red first um, now there's a couple of things we need um, to talk about is we're going to be looking at how transparent or opaque are these colors when they're neat just coming straight out of the tube so the first black line uh, going across there I'm just going to do with neat paint now I am pre soaking a brush so let's get a little bit of cardamom red, just a little drop there on our palette. Now you might have a different palette to mine, this just happens to be uh, the, the particular colours that I like to use. If you want to use other colours then please do this process with the colours that you've got on your palette. Um, but these are my preferred colours. So the next one on the list is a cadmium um, orange. I need to put the wrong colour out then. <laughs> live! This is not live. I can edit it if I want to. But I don't because we have fun in the studio. And it's all about that. Yes, now nice warm colours. What well, we got a cadmium yellow deep. You can look, it's, it's quite a nice warm yellow that one. I quite like that one. And um, let's put a little bit of yellow there. <coughs> oh. Dear me, I've got a bit of a cough tonight. It's that um, it's the pollen count is quite high, and as, as you know, I suffer a little bit with um, problems with the pollen. But we, we're okay. We don't want to have to worry about that. I can't. Here's the means. 
Okay, nice cadmium yellow medium. And um, we're going to finish off with a, a Naples yellow. Where did I put the Naples yellow? Carve. Where's your Naples yellow? Naples, Naples, Naples yellow. There we go. Naples yellow. There we go. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit mad, especially when you're making videos and lots of content like this, but it does help. But um, I just enjoy the process. So I, all I've done is I've got a bit of kitchen roll in my hand. I've pre-soaked my brush. Um, I've taken the moisture off it like that. I'm just going to pull out a little bit of cardamom red like that. I'm getting a nice load onto my brush. And I'm going to go underneath the cardamom red. And I'm just going to paint over it like that. And this is neat paint. And it's not thin. I'm not throwing it thin. I'm trying to do it as thick as I can. Just for you to, to see that you can see a little bit of black through it. So I would say that's slightly semi-transparent. I would say that's a semi-transparent paint. But we'll see what happens when it dries. So in the meantime, let's continue. I've washed my brush. Let's continue. Let's get a bit of Erizarin Crimson now onto the brush. I'm trying to load it up in the same way, just to be fair for the test. And then we're going to go underneath the Erizarin Crimson. And that's quite a dark paint. But it's got a little bit of, I can still see a little bit of that black through. So there's a little bit of transparency going on there but not a lot. You know, I'm trying to give it a nice fair test. I'm putting a fair bit of paint on there. And let's just see what happens when that dries. So I'm just continuing. I'm going to wash my brush again. I'm just going to make sure I get all that red pigment out of the brush. Okay. And again, wiping the brush in my kitchen roll. And we're going to go into some orange. Now this is a cardamom orange, um, a cardamom red and a cardamom yellow. We'll make this colour. And we'll go under the cardamom orange. And again, we'll have a look. Now that's killing a lot of that black off actually. So that's not as transparent as you might think. Let's just get a little bit more. Let's give it a fair test. So it's a little bit more opaque, I would say. But we'll see what happens when it's dry, because we can't make any judgments on these paints, and really until they're dry. So we need to just continue this process now. We'll go on with the cardamom yellow deep. And as we progress through this tutorial, it's a little bit time consuming, it's a little bit uh, laborious, but we need to do these type of things in the studio because it's not just about painting uh, your paintings, it's it's about understanding your, your, your paints, understanding your brushes, and all these type of things will help you immensely in the studio. Now when we come to do um, painting um, a tiger or a leopard or whatever we want, whatever I decide to do later on, um, is, is most probably going to be towards the end of this year, possibly um, beginning of next, that we're going to be doing that because we've worked on a cat and um, we've done some glazes with um, apples and one thing and another. So what I'm looking at is I want to introduce you now to the, the actual paints and brushes in a little bit more depth so we can understand how these things work for us. And we will go now on to the Naples yellow. And we'll do the same there again. Well, you can already see that's quite opaque. There's a fair bit of white paint in um, Naples yellow. That's quite opaque. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, rather than um, waste a video time, I'm just going to set up 
Um, the next, well, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, six there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll set up the next six on the palette and we'll carry that process on again. So just bear with me one second. And welcome back. As you can see, I've already put the next six colors onto the palette. I'm just moistening my brush as I did previously. And we're going into the lemon yellow. Now this is quite a nice lemon. This is this is a lovely color, this lemon yellow. I quite like this. I like this for grasses and things like that. And it's, it's a nice warm summery color. So let's put that yellow there. And then we wash our brush. Now I'm expected my black to be quite opaque because it's a mixture of ultramarine blue and um, and Mars black actually. So let's put that there. Oh, you can see that's nearly as that's nearly as black as. The black is just blue. Yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, my 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 lovely wife bought me a um, GoPro uh, camera um, for my birthday, um, which was quite a so nice surprise. I wasn't expecting one. So I should be going on holiday shortly to Cyprus, which I do every year, and I'll be using that, and hopefully I'll be doing some videoing underwater if I can. And perhaps when I come back we'll do a couple of seascapes and um, some more underwater scenes, which is quite interesting. Now feel of blue. There you go. And this is obviously these are just this is just one coat, and if you put two coats on, obviously you're going to increase the the coverage of the paints. Um, ultramarine blue. Washing brush. Make um, quite a lot of videos. Um, I upload Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and I do an update then on a Sunday. So normally there's uh, uh, three episodes um, that come out, three full videos normally, and some videos I split over a series of two to three or four. I'm going to keep it to a maximum of four cuts now. Uh, sail on blue. And the reason I do that is, as I've said before in previous updates, etc., is that um, it's the way I teach. Really, um, I try. I'm gonna not um, split them over weeks now. Uh, if I can help it, if I got if I got a video that's been um, cut into two, <clears throat> I'll upload them on the same week. So what I want you to do is be able to um, and hook a screen. What I wanted to do is be able to um, paint along with me. At your own pace because these are designed specifically for beginners and I am going into intermediate um, painting now um, hopefully once a week but I have got some lessons that I need to get out of the way first hookers green and um, I think it's um, a great way of actually doing things and I know I've got a lot of people that have painting and, and the some of the work that I've actually seen on our close group uh, is phenomenal I've got to be said okay so we got one two three four five six hey that was a that was that was more luck than judgment Clive so we got another six let's put them six out onto the palette and I shall come back shortly okay and we're back again let's do exactly what we did let's go into some phyllo green now I like phyllo green um, one of my favorite greens and I do use this a lot in portraits, believe it or not. There's more green in flesh than you think. But we'll cross that bridge again when we come to it. Thank you. And um, 
We're going to our earth tones now, which is uh, Van Dyke Brown. And I have been asked, can, I, can you mix Van Dyke Brown? I can't get Van Dyke Brown anyway. Can you mix Burnt Umber? Can you mix Rosiana? I'll show you, I'll do a tutorial on how to mix browns again. But yes, you can mix them. <coughs> I do suggest you actually get a colour mixing book. Um, I've mentioned this in the past as well. Uh, there's a couple of nice ones and really nice ones and good ones on the market and there are quite a, a couple of that I actually do use and I tweak the formulas. Um, that's where I get my flesh tones and hair colours and eye colours and things like that from. So. Yes, we need these things sometimes. Otherwise, we'd be this sitting there for hours and hours and hours and weeks and weeks and weeks trying to make these colours and writing them down and getting them right. And it's all about an easy life. And I think if we can have a nice easy life as artists, then that's all we need to do is enjoy the painting rather than worry about how we can mix actual paints. And this is a burnt sienna. These are lovely colours for animal portraits. We'll be discussing that again in the future. <clears throat> and we're going into a raw sienna now. And these are neat out of the tube with just the moisture that's on the brush and some yellow ochre. And there you go. So I'm going to let them dry and then we'll come back and have a look exactly how transparent or opaque these particular colours are. And yes, so let's have a look at the transparency of these colours. Now I've taken my hat off because it's quite warm in here and it gets, it's, it's, it's quite a warm um, evening in Wales. It certainly is. Now let's have a look at the transparency of the cardinum red. As you can see, looking at the black line, don't worry about either side. Looking at the black line, you, you're going to need to see it. Can you see through that? Can you see through the red and the black? Can you get that black coming through? Well, you can see a little bit of it. So I would say that's more like a, a, a transparent, a semi-transparent red. So if we thin that down, we should, we should get a little bit of transparency there. Can you glaze with that as it is? There's a possibility you could, but it's going to obscure a lot of the undercolour. The Rizzerin Crimson, I would say, is more of an opaque colour um, because you can't see much of the difference between the actual red itself, the crimson and the black. So I would say that's more opaque. <coughs> Whereas if we look at the orange, you can see a, a little bit of the black coming through there. So we'd have to paint that a couple of times to actually obscure the black. So I would say, again, that's a semi-transparent. Whereas the Cadmium Yellow Deep, um, the Cadmium Yellow Medium, are more transparent and then a semi-transparent or opaque so they're more transparent because you can see the black through them so we can glaze with them as they are don't need any thinning <clears throat> the Naples yellow again um, there seems to be a lot of white or something a lot of white pigment in that particular color because it's more opaque a lemon yellow again I would say is a transparent um, as you can see you can see a lot of the black actually through that so let's have a look at the next six so that takes us on to our Prussian blue. Now you can see, you can't see the black. It's gone. So that's opaque, definitely Prussian blue. There's Mars black in there, so it's, it's gone. Um, again, the feel of blue uh, is, is, now we could say that's transparent because um, you can actually see through it. Um, that's obscured the black, but you can see, actually see the black through that. Um, ultramarine blue, mm, I could I would say that's like a, a, a transparent, definitely transparent, whereas the Ceylon blue is more opaque, which you wouldn't think so because it's a, it's a lighter colour. So you would think that a, a darker colour would be more opaque than a lighter colour, but in this case it's not. But a lighter colour is more opaque because it's got a lot more 
of a white pigment to it, I would imagine, a lighter pigment, a more stronger pigment, and that's going to make it more opaque. Again with the hooker's green, that's very opaque. So looking at the um, phthalo green now, um, as you can see, it's totally transparent. And the Van Dyke brown, I would say, is uh, semi-transparent. Um, you can still see a little bit of black through it. Not a lot. Actually, I would go, I would say that's more opaque. Yeah, I would say this uh, Van Dyke brown is a little bit more opaque. Um, again, the burnt number, um, I would say semi-transparent on that one. Uh, the burnt sienna in this case um, is um, uh, transparent. Raw sienna definitely transparent, and the yellow ochre is a little bit more opaque. So um, it all depends on the um, actual um, brands of paint you use. Um, some manufacturers are different to others, so bear that in mind. So it's always good to, to actually do a test like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the first three uh, with you, and then I'm going to continue through the lot because I don't want to waste video time. So we're going to do the cadmium red, erythrum crimson, and the cadmium orange, and then we're going to thin them down slightly with water and do the same process again. So come and join me at the canvas. So in exactly the same way, um, we, we use the same brush, um, but we're going to thin this down just a touch. So we've got some water. Um, I've got some water in my little pot. So I'm going to put that up there. Just washing my brush, making sure there's no pigment in the brush. <coughs> There we go. So let's add a little bit of water now to this paint. Let's thin this down with a bit of water and see what happens. So we're going to do the cadmium red first. I'm just taking the excess moisture off. And thin this down to the consistency you would normally use it if you thinned it with water. There's no point over thinning it, is there? So you need to, to thin it down in, in the normal way that you would use it, which is, I would say, the more of a creamy consistency. And then we'll do exactly the same thing now with that and then washing the brush going into the erythrum and crimson we did say that was opaque so let's see if it makes a difference if we thin it down with a bit of water and the card yeah, orange and the other orange And like I said, the, 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 the true test of this is making sure they dry before you decide what you're going to do. And if you want to do a colour chart like this, do one and um, keep it. You can do it on a bit of masonette or hardboard, cardboard, paper, anything like that. Anything that will give you a rough idea of whether they're going to be transparent, opaque or um, semi-transparent. And just make a little note underneath them. So at least you know when you pick up the paint, um, it'll, it'll be a reminder for yourself. And as the more you use the paints, the more you, you remember. And uh, when we come to do the do the paintings, we know which are transparent, which are opaque, and which are semi-opaque. So I'm going to continue that process throughout, and just to save video time, I shall be back in a minute. Well, now that's done. It's amazing how things can change your mind. So I went through the top row when they were neat, and I said opaque, transparent, semi-transparent. Now looking at the ones that I've thinned down with water, as you can see on the second row. I've now changed my mind about the top row because you can see the difference between that and that which is giving you a different result to what we mentioned earlier and this is what I said. So that's the neat out of the tube and this is thinned and not overly thinned but this is thinned with uh, just a touch of water. So if I was using it as a wash um, then obviously these are the results I would get from those particular uh, range of paints. Now the other thing we've got to do now is, okay, so what's the other thing we normally use? We use a glazing medium. Um, this is a medium that's specifically designed for glazing techniques. Now glazing is basically a layer building um, process, where it is that you thin in down the paint, so you put in a small amount of pigment into this medium which is giving you a very like a transparent type of, of, of a glaze basically that's all it is it's, it's a transparent so you're thinning down that pigment you're thinning down the properties of the paint itself so to be more transparent so that the more layers you put on 
the, the stronger and vibrant uh, that the uh, actual uh, glazing technique becomes and the painting becomes. So what happens when the light shines through, it actually penetrates through all those levels, hits um, the canvas or the board and bounces back out. And as it reflects, it reflects all the colors from the actual glaze, the, the colors, the pigment that's in the glaze, it actually reflects. And that's what gives it a nice luster and shininess to a glazing. Now I like glazing paintings. Um, so we can do the same thing with a wash is what we just done with thin down our paint with water but it doesn't give the reflection. So what we're doing now, we've got the neat paint, but we've also got a paint that we've thinned with water, so we can still get that transparent wash. We can still glaze with water, but what it doesn't do is give that bounce, that, that shine, that luster to the actual glaze itself. It's more of a dull, flat, matte type of, there's no reflection in it because the, 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 the light particles cannot bounce off all the different light layers of, of, of varnishes. Now, varnishes, glazes, all the same basic thing. Don't use varnish, use the glazing mediums. So what we're going to do is the same process, exactly the same process now, but I'm going to be using the glazing medium to thin down the paints and see what type of result I get from that. And in exactly the same way, I'm going to just put a little bit of glazing medium onto my palette there, like that. And I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. And let's see what results we get from there. So again, starting with the cadmium red, erizarin crimson and a card orange. And then we will go from there. I wonder what results we're going to get on this time. So what we need to do now is to put the, the glaze um, in there. So let's have a look. We've got some glazing uh, medium actually on the canvas. So we pick up a bit of glazing medium into our brush like that. And then we, we're going to go at the top of each color now. For the simple reason is that we don't want to contaminate it with the water. So just picking up a bit of glaze. And this is just glazing medium now. And don't mix it with the water because we don't want to over thin this. So this is just the cadmium orange with a little bit of glazing medium. And we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll go into the bottom box. Now this will dry shiny, glossy. Because um, the glazing medium is a gloss finish. Washing our brush again. Picking up a little bit more glazing medium. And just a touch of arisen and crimson. And we go and do exactly the same thing again. And wash our brush. I am expecting a slightly different result to this. Not a lot difference between the thinning with the water, but enough to say that this might be a better method. But I'm biased at the moment, so until we, I've never done this before. So I do know what paints that I've got are transparent, what paints are semi-transparent, what paints are opaque, but this actually might change my mind. So it's good to actually do a test like this um, and, and just to confirm your, your thoughts. And I'm gonna continue doing that throughout those colors. So I shall be back now. <laughs> oh, it's like a roundabout in here tonight. Oh, dropping things on the floor and everything. And spinny spinny on my chair oh i tell you what it's been a long day today and i've had to go to work as well and um you know i clean windows for a living i've been up and down that ladder and and um i've thought i'd uh, come in the studio tonight and and, and, and confuse myself with glazing techniques <laughs> okay so i continue to do that and as you can see we now have three distinct ways of actually um, looking to see if we have got a semi-transparent, transparent or opaque paint, basically. And with the, the, the actual manufacturer that I've got and the way I've done it. So we went in originally on a neat and I made my assumptions on that, which have changed. And the, we are then uh, thinned the same paint with just a smidgen of water as we would normally use. And then we actually used a glaze as well. So I need to know now what um, we're going to do about that. So I'm going to mark my board 
and I'm going to make a judgment call. So let's have a look at the red. Now, neat, I would say that's more of an opaque um, neat. So we'll put a little O there on the top. Um, looking at that same um, color that's thinned with water, I would say it's a semi transparent with water and with a glaze is definitely transparent so just that particular color um, as you can see the red um, it's opaque when it's neat it's semi-transparent as you would expect because it's thinner um, with uh, water but with a glaze um, it's actually more transparent than semi-transparent so it's just giving her that little push to make it a little bit more of a see-through paint. And again, we are looking at the Rizzo and Crimson. I would say, again, that's opaque when it's neat. Um, it's more transparent. I can actually just see a little bit of, of a tinge of red to it, but I would say that's more transparent when it's thinned. And again, looking at that, I can still see the black and it's got a touch of red to it, a bit of a shine. I'd say it's transparent when it's we use it as a glaze. Looking at the cardinum orange, um, it's a strange one, that one. Um, I'd say it was semi-transparent. Yeah, I would say that's semi-transparent. And again, even when it's thin with water, it's semi-transparent. But again, transparent when it's used with a glazing medium. Semi-transparent. In my test, I'd say that was transparent in um, a glazing medium. Semi-transparent for raw sienna. Uh, it's transparent and transparent and yellow ochre is opaque uh, it's opaque and it's still more opaque than anything so but we will say it's semi-transparent just for the fun of things and um, there you go so what a good test that's been this evening i'm quite impressed yes so there you go we've got the full chart in in front of us you've got my full range of colors that I use in um, uh, my paintings which are across the top so if you've got your own palette do this little test and um, put some black lines on your board and work out by using a neat paint and use it using it thin with water uh, to what consistency you normally paint with don't over thin it use it as, it as you would normally would and add a little bit of glazing medium a bit of gloss glazing medium a bit of matte glazing medium whatever and try that and these are the type of results you get. So you need to put that one side so you know when we do, say, um, um, I don't know, a, a tiger or something like that, that we can use these colors here for glazing fur. Now that's exciting because that's something we're going to be covering, if we haven't already covered it, is actually using paints to glaze over different colors to give you different results to warm or cool or um, tone up things and I put shadows in you can paint a multi-layer and these this is where acrylics comes in and the same with oils you can do this exactly the same with oil paints and this is the the nitty-gritty of your colors what can go over what what gives you this tone and adding that color over that color will that give you a different color and you know you've got all these wonderful things to play with and um, it's numerous 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 lessons for me to get down to, yes. So, Rams, if you put uh, uh, like a, this colour over that colour, does that give you a different tone? Of course it will, in certain aspects. So that's something we want to look at in a future uh, a video. And, um, like I said, when we want to paint leopards and things like that, and dogs and hair, and people, if you do a people portraits, these are the type of things you can learn to, to put your under um, detail in, and glaze over it. Or wash over it whatever you decide to do and this is where these charts come into it because you know what a transparent what a semi-transparent what a opaque and by doing this simple little test you will learn very quickly how to do that 
there we are so all remains me to say is thank you very much for joining me in the studio tonight taking up my invitation i i am so grateful for all of you to actually join me here and listening to me waffle and um, we will be doing a painting shortly now Please press the subscribe button, that's very important. If you haven't already subscribed, um, please press that. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. And as you can see here, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays are my upload days. Sunday is normally um, a, 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 an update, and I've got normal videos coming out on Mondays and Wednesdays, and a Q&A, normally a Q&A on a, a Thursday. Uh, yes, th th Thursday. So, um, that's great. Now, sometimes I'll slip an odd video in here and there, and we do a live broadcast every month. Yes, I will down for there. Live broadcast. Oh, it's that way. That way. Right. That way. Yes. And there's other places you can go to Pinterest, there's Twitter, Facebook group. If you want to join our Facebook group family, then please do that. Pop along to Patreon and all that. So, thank you very much for joining me in the studio and taking up my invitation. And I'm so grateful. May God go with you. Have a good day, a good week, a good month, a good year. Because as you know, time is relative on YouTube, and I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this. All remains to be said. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you soon. Nice. No,